afternoon all. Um, day 19, full stop. Um, not in, uh, not dramatic to report. Um, still a sort of steady improvement. Um, still got the sort of attacks here, the, the, the wobbles um, uh, when, I'm, when I'm walking and you know, the feeling of the tractor being pulling me over to the left. Um, I also have a lot of stiffness in and around the uh, the, the back and shoulders a lot of the time when when moving, be it from sitting or standing. Although um, I, I don't think that's residual stiffness as it happens. Uh, basically, when when the body can't provide um, authentic stability, it will uh, provide will provide the stability through uh, through stiffness. Uh, you know, stiffening the the, the prime movers rather than utilising the. Um, more sort of stabilizers. Um, I had a, had a couple of questions uh, around the the sort of the philosophy behind the exercise uh, protocol or recovery protocol that I'm um, I'm using, uh, particularly the breathing. So I'll just expand a little bit on um, on that. The one I'm going to call it an exercise program as opposed to a recovery program. That's just exactly what it is. Um, when mostly, um, although a lot of people just train blindly, uh, mostly people have a, a particular objective with respect to the um, to an exercise program, and this instance is is no difference. It's an exercise program with the objective being um, learning how to to walk, um, walk, run, crawl, climb again. Um, Hence, uh, with all of them being fundamental um, complex movements, uh, you've got to start looking at the, the real low um, primary movements as the building blocks for them. I mean, that, that again is not a radical way to try to train, to, to look at providing building blocks. It's just that most often people um, uh, either ignore or just make assumptions about the you know the low level patterns but you can support what they're after as in for instance if if they want to run uh, I think yeah get out and run run loads and and you'll be a better runner uh, you probably won't be a, a, a better runner as such as in your running technique will have a little improvement you will just raise your, your raise your capacity uh, your heart rate your glucose levels your, your ability to deliver that and store that uh, which you know, that, that's a small part for me, misses the technique of running. Um, you know, you, you have to start looking down at core stability, range of movement, um, and well, all, all the all the primitive patterns we, we've got in place there. Um, so I, I think, I, I don't think it should be uh, any surprise or considered radical, this idea of um, a hierarchical, approach to achieving a movement um again i think the only bit here where i i, I think it can you know maybe be considered an insight is to what these lower level uh, these primary patterns are uh and you know the, the fact that, that walking is in fact a complex movement and um if if you're um if, if you can't do the uh, those primary movements you'll just have some sort of dog shit amb ambulation pattern which allows you to get round on two legs but ain't authentic walking um the the neural development sequence um again ain't radical everyone knows uh, the stages that a, that a baby goes through um when essentially learning to walk um and each of those stages is, is one of the primary patterns. Um, uh, certainly in my position, it shouldn't be considered radical that in order to to get from just about being able to lie on your back to being able to um, to walk, you know, you, you follow the same pattern that um, a baby does. Uh, you see, I'm getting a double vision here, which is, you can see the, the lazy eye kicking in. Um, yeah, uh, so the, the neural development sequence shouldn't be considered radical. Uh, what, ironically, 
often is, you know, considered radical is this, I, yeah, it's the idea that, you know, Mother Nature's process in there can't be improved. For instance, when you get parents trying to uh, have their babies walking quicker than anyone else in nursery and you start trying to give them baby walkers and suspension chairs and stuff like that, um, you can't, you can't speed up nature's process in uh, in that instance. Um, all you can do is provide a safe environment for the um, uh, for the exercise, and should we call it, to, to take place. Uh, anything else is just going to get in the way. Any shortcut might get you to look like you can achieve the next stage quicker, but it'll be a sham, and it'll also be provide a glass ceiling for your authentic movement. Um, and all of this ain't ain't um, my you know invention or it's not me who's revealed this like uh, as ever in anything which is uh, of, of any useful level of significance or sorry significant level of usefulness uh, you know you're always standing on the shoulder of giants like um, in this case for me uh, you know well just an introduction into the whole concept of functional movement and anatomy was um, uh, a bloke uh, known as the legend of Paddy Phillips uh, and then I, I, almost the, the 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 rest of uh, of either the, the knowledge I've directly received or uh, researched has been from a guy called uh, Greg Cook there's a lot of um, a lot of Greg Cook's uh, work available on the internet or or for purchase I've also attended a number of seminars of his. Um, uh, basically, whenever that bloke talks, uh, pin your ears back because it's uh, solid gold. Um, the introduction to the neural development sequence and its usefulness within um, the, you know, athletic training um, came from there for me, um, and 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 also the the the, the way to to go about your training. Um, which you know you can consider it a, a set of rules, um, which which would go like, you know, you seek to train in a rich proprioceptive environment, using authentic movement patterns that are consistent with your goals, um, close to but not beyond the limit of your abilities, where you're challenged but successful. Now to take each one of those rules uh, in order, uh, seek to train in a rich proprioceptive environment. Proprioception is a combination of, of balance and your awareness of, of yourself, space and time and your environment. So the more sterile that is, um, for instance, consider gym training on a machine that provides you with your own stability. Um, and therefore robs you of an ability to, to learn stabilization patterns yourself. That's a wholly proprioceptive, sterile environment. Nothing's dynamic. Um, everything is entirely prescriptive and it teaches you very little. Um, uh, whereas you know, an extreme proprioceptive environment, for instance, would be like, I don't know, doing, um, doing front, front squats with a... Uh, you know, with a barbell on while standing on a Swiss ball, you know, where the, the you have to control the dynamics of the environment, otherwise it will, you know, um, uh, it will be, become terminal for you. Um, second rule, using um, authentic movement patterns that are consistent with your goal. Again, that, that you know, all of these rules are bloody common sense. Like, right, that one is... Uh, most times when people get into a gym or do a training session, be it circuits or whatever, they have a list of exercises which are dead good that they've learned off uh, most part people or institutions that they respect and they've been passed down as a dead good exercise. Like, yeah, press ups are dead good or bear peas are dead good. And often the 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 criteria for being dead good is just to for it to be hard or it, uh, to knock it out. Um, 
and if, if that's all an exercise brings to the table you got to question whether it's the most effective choice you can make uh, for your training time available and also the resources and energy that you got available um, number three close to but not beyond the, uh, the limit of your abilities common sense again once once you overreach um, your abilities you'll no longer be using the uh, efficient and then therefore probably authentic movement pattern you're going to a compensation pattern because you're trying to achieve something that is beyond your capabilities now practice doesn't make perfect like the the person who thinks just going out and running and you know, they'll, they'll get good at running they won't you, practice makes permanent not perfect so you will get good at what you practice at and if you practice a shit pattern that won't become a good pattern you'll just get good at the shit pattern um, and then that rule goes hand in hand with the fourth one of where you are challenged but successful if you're not challenged there'll be no development uh, if you're successful there there will be there will be learning um, uh, and, and also because you're successful it, it will indicate that you've been using uh, most likely uh, an authentic pattern certainly if you've honored all of the other rules you will be using an authentic pattern but if you're not successful chances are you will have compromised um, a level of authenticity of your movement so um, get back on to us if you want any clarity around that I've also just uh, about got a little bit of time under me my 15 minute limit of um, talking about breathing um, which is the, the, the first uh, exercise in the prescriptive um, exercise suite um, much like any movement or any task which involves uh, a number of body parts there uh, the, you know there's a right way to do it and there's a load of wrong ways of doing it breathing is no different um, you are your body is designed to to breathe using your diaphragm and breathe into your abdomen which will give you core stability uh, as well as spinal stability and control uh, a real real good example is uh, using breathing patterns and a, 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 what's known as a valsalva like a pressure bubble in your abdomen uh, in an appropriate way when you're performing a deadlift uh, compare a, a deadlift with authentic breathing and a deadlift with garbage breathing and you, you, you're talking uh, well, depending on the person there's probably a difference between 20 and 50 kilos and what you can uh, lift with, with a good pattern um, so that that is why breathing is the fundamental pattern um, a baby doesn't go on to any of the next steps until it's spent about the first three months developing that breathing pattern um, what that breathing pattern gives it is all those previously listed benefits uh, spinal uh, stability and control core stability about which, without which you can't link um, uh, you know upper, upper torso lower limbs or, or limbs with limbs with uh, torso and other limbs um, the transfer and control of energy it, it's a fundamental component of that um, one of the ways to, to think about it is consider a fence post fence post with a spike at the bottom you give that fence post uh, a whack with a sledgehammer the force transfers through the middle down into the spike and the spike goes into the ground now imagine if the um, if the middle of the fence post uh, was not stiff and stable um, I you know, wasn't filled with something be it, be it wood, be it metal or be it air uh, if it was just floppy and empty you give it a whack on the top and then the fence post will go all over the show uh, it certainly wouldn't get the force transmitted down and into the ground um, and another example of what a filled core uh, can offer you um, well, anyway, that's uh, me just about filled the 15 minutes. Um, I imagine a little five minute um, update was probably what you were all after, but there you go. You know, um, I'll, um, I'll give you another another update um, over the next couple of days, uh, particularly a three week marker. I'll do the, the piano and the walking again. All right, cheers all. Ta